Resilience is unquestionably during these difficult times where all of us are struggling with fatigue, struggling with um, maintaining our energy and our enthusiasm, figuring out ways to ensure that this whole darn pandemic thing hasn't, hasn't really pulled the wool out or rather rug out from under us. Um, resilience is the thing that helps keep us going. So I thought it would be tremendously important for us to understand what is resilience made of and how can you build in your life more of it? So we took a survey of about 100 questions asking people a whole range of different things, um, 25 countries around the world, a thousand people per country. And the focus was yes on measuring engagement, which as you know, we have an eight question survey to measure engagement. Um, but then we were also trying to look really focusedly on or at resilience. The difference between engagement and resilience, by the way, engagement is the frame of mind that you're in that enables you and your team to give of your best. It is a proactive frame of mind that helps you deliver your most excellent performances. It's proactive. Resilience is reactive and it measures the state of mind that you have that would enable you to bend in the face of challenges and bounce back. We don't really know how much resilience you have until you face challenges and are forced to bend and then bounce back. So whereas engagement is about proactively, am I set up to deliver of my best? Resilience is, okay, when, when tough times are met, what kind of resources, psychological resources do you have that enable you to bend back or bend rather and then bounce back and move forward? Some part of that is what's called a trait. I mean, some people just have more resilience than other people. It's a bit like happiness. Some parts of happiness are a trait. Some people's happiness uh, set point is higher than other people's set point. Some people's resilience set point is higher than other people's resilience set point. So some parts of resilience are trait based, but again, just like happiness, some parts of them are state based, as in they can move. Yes, you may have a set point, but you have a range that you could move up and move down around that set point, just like you might have a set point for happiness. Some people are just sort of happier than others, but whatever their set point is, they can move high above it or below it. There's a range around that set point. Same is true with resilience. So what we were looking at was what are the, what are the state-like elements of resilience? The things about resilience we could help you build more of. Um, so what we did, we took these questions, asked these questions of all of these people around the world, looked at various outcomes uh, that you might expect resilience to relate to, like absences or lost work days or accidents on the job, things like that. And we threw out any question that didn't seem to show any relationship to those things. And we threw out any question that didn't seem to be connected to the other questions. I won't bore you with all the statistical analyses that we did, but we ended up with these 10 questions. These 10 questions as yet do the best job of measuring this thing called resilience. If you answer positively to all these 10, then you are highly resilient. I'm going to put my glasses on to read these because <laughs> they're really small. Um, I have all the freedom I need to decide how to get my work done. That's asked on a scale of one to five, with five being strongly agreed. No matter what else is going on around me, I can stay focused on getting my work done. In the last week, I have felt excited to work every day. Not all day, every day, just says every day. I always believe that things are going to work out for the best. My team leader tells me what I need to know before I need to know it. I trust my team leader. I'm encouraged to take risks. Senior leaders are one step ahead of events. Senior leaders always do what they say they're going to do. I completely trust my senior leaders. So of all the questions that we tried when we ran all of our analysis, these 10 questions capture best this, this mindset called resilience. Have a look at those for a minute and just imagine what you would be saying to them if you had to ask them 
answer them today for yourself in your life. When you look at them, what occurs to you probably is that resilience, your feeling of being able to bend and bounce back comes from three distinct sources. It comes from your, your senior leaders, yourself and your team leaders. So the first four questions really deal with your own experience of your own work. The next three questions really deal with the behaviors and actions of your team leader. And then the final three questions, eight, nine, and 10, deal with the actions and your perceptions of the actions of the senior leaders.